Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to KNews54 about the upcoming Ariane 5 launch. The rocket built by Airbus in Europe has a liquid hydrogen and oxygen core stage powered by the Vulcan 2 engine. Since the engine alone would be too weak to lift the rocket, it needs two big boosters which work like fireworks, burning solid propellant to get the rocket far outside into space where the Vulcan 2 reaches its maximum thrust. This is for one because of the low outside pressure and two the relatively big engine bell for a first stage but more about that in just a few seconds. On top sits the other stage carrying two satellites which are separated by the so called Siddler. Ariane is rounded off with a 17 meters tall fairing that's almost twice as high as an ordinary German house for example. Liftoff is scheduled for Wednesday August 24th at 21.55 UTC and it will take place in Kourou, French Guiana. It lies north of Brazil where athletes from all around the world recently gathered to compete in the Olympic Summer Games which is quite ironic if you ask me because it is actually winter in Brazil. Anyways, as the Ariane Space Livestream commentator likes to put it, the real rumble in the jungle will be heard when Ariane takes off and slowly turns eastwards along the equator. As I previously mentioned, the Vulcan 2 engine is rather special because although it is a first stage, the engine bell is optimized for extremely high altitudes. Just by the way, the goal of such a bell is to confine the exhaust expansion as it leaves the nozzle such that it matches the outside pressure leaving it. Now that sounds a little complicated but if you imagine this highly pressurized flaming exhaust bubble coming out of it, it expands until it reaches the outside pressure because it has no more reason to grow. The goal of the bell is to force the exhaust to shoot backwards until the pressure equalizes. Like this all the good energy can be used to propel the rocket forward. However, a perfect bell in space would be almost infinitely large because there is no pressure in space and this is of course impossible so there are always some losses. The reason the Vulcan 2 is optimized for space are the two gigantic boosters which dwarf the engine thrust wise having 10 times more power. Vulcan 2 can basically relax until they separate. After booster separation a little over 2 minutes into the flight, the core will go on for 6 more minutes until it separates the upper stage which will then do a burn lasting 15 minutes. Before that happens however, the fairing will be split in half and jettisoned unveiling the payload. Speaking of it, both satellites are from the company Intelsat and called Intelsat 33E and 36. The numbers do by the way in this case not correlate with a place they will be put in orbit like some other communication satellites. The bigger one on top is 33E, weighs roughly 6 tons, is built by Boeing and based on their 702MP platform. It will be put at 60 degrees east looking at the Indian Ocean which will allow it to cover the majority of Europe, Asia, Africa and even parts of Australia which are west of Adelaide. Intel Z36 on the other hand will be placed a little farther east at 68.5 degrees which will allow it to cover a little more but still not the complete continent. This one is built by SSL, is as mentioned much smaller and has therefore less bandwidth it can provide. However, it will be co-located with Intelsat 20 which is already orbiting at the same spot. So Intelsat basically makes full use of Ariane's capabilities by splitting three big satellites it would normally use into one and a half it launches twice. Now before I go on let me give a shout out to those who decided to support my little crowdfunding campaign on Patreon. It not only helps financially but also motivates a lot. Thanks. I've explained or at least tried to explain it in the past already but I think I found a better way to showcase how in earth they create these weird shaped signal coverages. It makes sense to shape the signal so it matches the land because this is where most people live and less energy is wasted over the ocean. The trick is done by the dishes which are nothing but mirrors to radio waves. If your eyes retina would be sensitive to such waves it could look like this. The red ball would be the signal and a flat mirror does not morph it in any way. Like this the signal would simply cover a circular shaped region on ground. What you see on the right is the same mirror with a checkerboard to make the deformation visible I will slowly add. As you can see the ball changes its shape and so would the signal. Engineers now calculate the deformation they need in order to get the best result. I just play around a bit and can actually split the ball into many individual spots which actually looks quite similar to such satellite coverages. I hope that explains how it works a little better because it's really not so complicated as it looks. Meanwhile the upper stage burned out and now separates Intelsat 33E, the Siddler and Intelsat 36, one after another. Both will perform their own maneuvers every time they reach their apoapsis over the next few weeks to circulate their orbits. Ok, that shall conclude KNews episode 54 about Ariane 5 and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.